Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to run a one-way ANOVA in R. Let's dive in. So today you will learn how to do exploratory data analysis by looking at histograms and box plots. Then we'll check for normality and equal variances, which are some of the assumptions of the ANOVA test. Then we'll run the ANOVA using two commands, AOV and LM, and then we'll interpret the output and results. So for today's tutorial, we'll be using the plant growth data set, which comes with R. And we're going to read in the ggplot2 library, which will allow us to make some box plots, and the dubai library, which will allow us to do some summary statistics. So let's take a look at plant growth. Uh, if you want to find information, you can always do question mark, question mark, plant growth, and then go to data sets. And here you can read that it's a results from an experiment to compare yields as measured by dry weight of plants obtained under a control and two different treatment conditions. So there's three groups. There's the control and treatment one and treatment two. And then we have a data frame of 30 cases on two variables. So let's take a look at that data set briefly. Maybe we'll just do some view, plant growth. As you can see here, we have the weights, which are 30 of them, and the groups, control, treatment one, and treatment two. So here we have our plant growth object or data set, and we're passing it X is the group category and Y is the weights. And then we're telling ggplot that it, to make it into a box plot. So here you see the box plots. Here we have the weight and each of the categories. Um, treatment two seems to have a higher distribution and mean uh, than treatment one and control. And these two are overlapping, so they might not be statistically significant, but that's what we're going to check with the ANOVA test. But let's see. One of the assumptions of the ANOVA is that you have normality. For that, we can do a formal test. In this case, we can do the Shapiro test. So I'm feeding in the plant growth data set, uh, the weights only, just the outcome variable. So because we have a p-value of 0.89, that means that we passed the normality test and we don't have to worry. However, if you had a p-value less than 0.05, then that would mean that you don't have a normal distribution. If you have a p-value that's close to your threshold, but it doesn't quite make it, you might be able to assume that the uh, data is normally distributed. If you take a look at the histogram, of the weights. I mean, in this case, it's very normally distributed and you, and you might have something that's similar. That's a little bit more advanced, but in some cases, the central limit theorem, you can use that to make a case for normality. It's just that maybe you didn't have enough samples. But in this case, we don't have to worry. And here I had already plotted the histogram with some colors, um, just using basically the same commands. And now we're going to test for um, equal variances. So for that, you'll use the Barlett test and you're going to pass in your weight variable, your group variable, and then your data set, which is called plant growth. So the way you interpret this test is the same as a Shapiro test. You want to have a p-value that's greater than 0.05, uh, which we do. So that means that we can assume equal variances between the groups. Now to run the ANOVA, uh, it's the same arguments inside as the Burlet test. We're going to save this into an object called result, and then we'll take a look at the summary of the result. Uh, here you see the degrees of freedom, the sum of squares, the mean squares. All of these uh, values are used to calculate the F value, which is then used to look at the F distribution. So the ANOVA uses the F distribution and uses the F value to give us the probability or p-value. So here we see that the p-value is significant. Uh, in this case, we're using a 0.05 threshold. And we can assume that or conclude that the difference in means are different. So I wanted to mention something that is good practice to do. I didn't do it in the beginning, but I'm gonna I'm doing it now. Is that I'm converting the group variables in this plant growth data set into factors so that the ANOVA recognizes them as categories or levels instead of numbers. Uh, I think it already figured it out because it, it gave us the correct answer and everything, but it is good practice to, every time you have explanatory variables to convert and they're categorical, that you convert them into factors. 
uh, using as factor. Now we can take a look at the model coefficients. So I'm feeding it similarly the weight, the groups, and the data set, and we're saving it into an object called mod. And here we have a value for the intercept and then some values for treatment one and treatment two. So this intercept is actually the control. I know this because it's, we have three categories and it's, it's, we're already listing here treatment one and treatment two. So what R does is it grabs the first um, alphabetical level uh, of the categories and we use that as the intercept. It doesn't really matter what it uses as, as the intercept, it's just used for creating contrast, but in this case it's the control, so everything's going to be compared to that control. Uh, the mean of the control is 5.032, and this value here is the difference between means between treatment 1 and the intercept, so it's negative. So we know from this that treatment 1 is greater, and the, similarly for treatment 2, this 0.494 is the mean of treatment 2 minus this mean of the control, 5.032. And I can show that, show that to you in a second. I just wanted you to understand what these coefficients mean, because it's what it's doing here is a contrast. And if you wrap around this mod object into ANOVA, it will give us the same result we saw before when we just did AO, you used the AOV command. Now, to calculate quickly the summary statistics, I'm using the summary by function, which comes from that Dubai library we read in. I'm passing in the weights, the, the tilde, the groups, the plant growth uh, data set, and also I'm specifying that I want to get the means, the medians, and the standard deviations. So I'm so saving that, and then if we print it, we'll see that here we have all the means for each of the groups, the medians, and the standard deviations. So if we were to take the group uh, treatment 2, 5.526, minus the, con the mean of the control is 0.494, which is what we had seen before here, right? And you see the 5.032, which is the mean of the control. This was the intercept. And then for treatment one, we have 4.661 minus 5.032, negative 0.371. So that's what those numbers mean. So the conclusion of this analysis is that we found statistically significant differences between the means of the three groups. So if we go back to our box plot, we're saying that some of these means are different, but we don't know which ones are statistically different. For that, you will need to use a post hoc test like the two key test. And I have a tutorial on that if you're interested. I have the link in the description box below. So now you know how to run a one-way ANOVA in R. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Please let me know if you'd like to see more content and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content so far.